Hey Canyoners, welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. Apparently I should put a disclaimer on my stuff, so I'm not a qualified guide. I'm just more of it too much time on his hand. I'm going to show you how to do some knots, go and get some proper instruction if you want to learn how to do it properly. First one is figure eight on a bike. Handy knot for the end of your rope. Uh, gives you somewhere to tie into, somewhere to put onto an anchor. Take a bite from the rope, which is just this loop, it's called a bite. Hand down, throw it over the back. You've got to come all the way around and just try and make sure you're not crossing things over as you're coming around to make a nice neat knot. Once you get to this stage, you flip these two over, pulls down into a nice, neat, dressed knot. And that's what you want. A neat knot's a strong knot. Figure eight follow through. So this is when you need to, you want to attach to an anchor or around a tree, and you want the figure eight for security. So basically, similar to on a bike, but instead of doing it on a bike, just do it on the end. So take the end all the way around, and back up through. So you have the figure eight in the middle of your rope. Put the end through your anchor, around your tree, whatever you need to do. And then you just follow this back through, but it's important to stay on the same size. So because it's on your right there, I'm going to stay on the left. So when I come through there, I keep on the left. And I'm going to keep on that inside as I come around to make it nice and neat. And then I'm on the inside again, so I want to be on the inside here and back through there. Be great, bolt or simple. Next one's the Alpine Butterfly. Alpine Butterfly is a real good midline rope. Let you attach other other things into the middle of the rope. Let you set up anchor points with the loop. All sorts of things, really handy. Um, use it to isolate strands uh, when you're abseiling. Really handy lot to know. There's a thousand different ways to tie this and if you really want to get keen, jump on Rope Labs and see Rich Delaney. Uh, he loves this knot and he's got a heap of different ways including a retrace method to, to tie it. Unbelievable if you jump on and have a look at your stuff. But the method I use, rope from in near your thumb, tuck in your finger there, and around once, around twice, and this middle rope, pull it out, that's going to be a loop, all the way through, and then back, and then pull it up nice and tight, everything nice and neat. You got now outline butterfly, got two little loops there, and a loop in the middle. Now, I see when people are isolating ropes, they they often, and I'll do it on a double. So to do it, uh, double ropes, I want to try and isolate these strands, exactly the same. From the corner of your thumb, up to your finger, and once, and twice, Middle strand pulls up to make the loop, and then all the way up and through, all the way up and through. Now, I often see when people isolate the strands, so I'll clip this back into the anchor, and that's fine, you can do that, but you don't really need to. That It's a good midline knot. The pull's going to come straight through, and it's not really pulling on this strand at all. Put the carabiner in there if you want to, just to be sure, but you don't really need to. Uh, gives a good point mid rope to clip into. As I said, you can redirect anchors if you need to do that. Any little lot to know. Outline butterfly. Easy.
So the next one is clove hitch. Uh, the difference between a knot and a hitch is a hitch needs something in it to keep it together. So technically a prussic and even a stone knot is a hitch. Uh, the clove hitch is pretty simple. Again, there's a thousand different ways to tie this. The easy one is just to go across like that. So you loop them forwards, loop them backwards, cross them over, and then you clip the middle. Really handy anchor knot because it's really easy to adjust where it is. So you can take up slack if you need to on one strand or lengthen the other one, whatever you need to do. Um, can slip under big loads or not so big loads. So if you're going to use that as an anchor knot, you put a figure eight in and just back it up. Another handy one that's similar to the clove hitch is the Munti hitch. The Munti hitch, you start the same as what you would do with a clove hitch, so like that. And then you drop one strand out, so forward, backwards, and instead of having both like that, just drop one strand out. And it clips on like that. Now, this is a knot you can use to repel on, you can use it to uh, lower people, so it actually pulls through. You can use it to belay people if I need to. It's unidirectional, so if I want to go the other way, the knot just pulls around and then it goes the other way. The multi hitch. Next one would be the stein or the stone knot. You can use it to isolate strands or if you're using a fiddle stick, really handy little knot. So generally you've got your twin strands coming through your anchor. And it's pretty simple. You just make a loop, fold that up on itself, pull the loop through, and then hitch into that. Now if you're using it to isolate strands like that, just using a carabiner, really good idea to put that being it back through there, at least one strand to stop it pulling through. Open it up like that, just stops it pulling through. If you don't do that, it's unlikely, but it's possible for that to roll around and actually pull through. So you want to make sure that you're nice and safe with that one. Joining ropes together, a few different knots we can do with that. Mentioned the double fishmans the other day doing the prussic loops. You can use it to join uh, rope ends together to abseil off as well. I'll explain why I don't tend to do that anymore, but pretty simple. Ropes cross each other. So I'm taking the orange one, I'm just wrapping it back along where my thumb is there. Two loops around, basically just a, a barrel knot, then back up where my thumb is. And you pull that one tight. Now, a lot of people then tell you to turn around, but I just go left handed, do the same thing. One, two, three, and back up through. And when you pull it nice and tight, you can see there's two little crosses there, and when you pull tight, they sit nice and snug into each other. Again, the better you dress it, the better the knife. Um, the reason people don't tend to use double fishmen to, to join ropes without abseiling anymore, really difficult to undo once you weight them fully up. And also, these big edges are really prone to catching if you're trying to pull 
down over ledges and stuff like that. So a bit more prone to get your rope stuck. Really hard to undo afterwards. But double fish hook is not. Pretty bomber. Um, really good knot for joining classic loops. So the knot most people use to join two ropes together these days to abseil on is just the thumb knot or the EDK. It's a real simple knot. So the Yanks sort of nicknamed it the European Death Knot because it, is, it looks really simple and you think, oh, well, it can't be good enough, but it is. A couple of things you need to, to be aware of, though. It can roll up, up your, your rope. It'll do two or three rolls. Each time it rolls, it'll tighten itself. So you need long tails just in case. If you haven't dressed it properly, that knot will roll. The other thing is, if you're using two ropes of different diameter, like I am, you want the smaller rope to be on the bottom. I'll show you why. So, so, so. so, as I tie that, I've just put the smaller rope on the bottom there. There's less chance of that trying to roll up over the over the large rope. If I went the other way and had larger diameter rope on the bottom, there is a chance that'll actually roll up over the top of that small one. Not a big chance, but there's a chance there. So as I said, make sure the small rope ends up underneath. For a bit of extra security, I suppose, to stop that knot rolling, some people do a double uh, thumb knot. Pretty simple again, just start as you would normally. Thumb knot like that. But then, make sure everything's nice, so you come back around it for a second time. And you get, cinch everything nice and tight. Double thumb knot. One that I've been using lately is just the one and a half. It's a similar to double, but start as normal. Your normal little thumb knot. Then just take the inside one through again. To be honest with you, I don't think it makes it any more secure. It's just more of a peace of mind thing, both the double and the, the one and a half. And again, pretty easy to undo.